What is going on, Pokemon fans? Welcome back to JD's Nerdverse. We're doing a playthrough today of Pokemon Crystal with Totodile. Totodile is known as the Big Jaw Pokemon. So we're going to go and watch this first battle here with a wild Pokemon. Not a big deal. Just want to show you a little, little bit of what the Pokemon does. So, yeah, it's called the Big Jaw Pokemon. The entire line is actually called the Big Jaw Pokemon. It doesn't happen that way with a lot of Pokemon. Like, for example, Cyndaquil was the Fire Mouse Pokemon. And then when Evolved, it became the Volcano Pokemon and so on. So, I'm showing a little bit more of the plot in this game. There's not a really great plot in this game, but Professor Oak, Mr. Pokemon, is what we're talking to right now. They're going to give me an egg to take to Professor Elm. And when we uh, take that egg there, Professor Elm will be very surprised. He's never seen an egg before in his life. And that's what we're doing now. And now he's calling us because the place has been robbed of one of the Pokemon. So... Um, this is where we meet our rival. Our rival is triple question mark. He's not actually named that. Uh, he actually has no name, and we can give him whatever name we want. Um, I've always just settled with, uh, you know, Butthead or something like that. But in the, the cliche part of this game is we always give him a <laughs> triple question mark. So our rival is Chikorita. It's uh, the best Pokemon against the water type, obviously, because it's grass. And like I said, we name it tri triple question mark. It's kind of the cliche name for our rival in this game. So, um... Totodile, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about him. Totodile is very solid starters. Actually, I think it's world renowned, voted as the best starter in Generation 2. It gets access to a lot of things that make this playthrough very, very easy to do. Um, while I'm here, before we get really into this playthrough, I want to ask everyone to please subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. Helps the channel grow. I'm up to 300 and uh, almost, I think it's like 340 um, subscribers. Uh, no, I think it's like 380, 384 subscribers, things of what it is. And I'm very close to getting to that 500 mark, but uh, I need more subscriptions to do so, so I would appreciate it <coughs> if you could subscribe and help the channel out a little bit. I know you got all this other content out there to watch as well, but I just hope that you can endorse mine a little bit. And I'm looking exactly, yep, 384 is exactly what I have right now. So, um, right along this path we're on right now, there's nothing super great to go over it's not like I can uh, you know call these fights and they're gonna be good fights they're all gonna be like one or two shots pretty simple because we have we just, we're way over level compared to everything else and yeah so our stats of this Pokemon we have HP is uh, 50 attack is 65 defense is 64 special attack is 44 special defense is 48 and speech is 43 so solid stats across the board attack and defense are definitely our best stat and our uh, worst stat axe is our speed which isn't that big a deal because if we were on the same levels every Pokemon we fought it would probably be a big deal because some things would outspeed us pretty well but the fact that we're gonna over level a little bit we're gonna mitigate the speed by doing that so not the biggest deal in the world and now we're just progressing and eventually we're gonna get into Sprout Tower uh, Bell Sprout Tower and Bell Sprout Tower is not too big of an issue I thought it'd be a lot bigger an issue than it was by the way I named uh, our Totodile Reptar Reptar is, uh, if you ever watched uh, Rugrats, it's the dinosaur in there that all the kids love to watch. Kind of like supposed to be like Godzilla. Um, so, kind of looks like Godzilla. So, that's why I named him uh, Reptar. So, yeah. Uh, early game, you have some pretty good moves. I gotta explain a dynamic. So, we have Rage. Um, early game, we got level 7. Rage is, works different in Generation 2 and it does 1. In Generation 1, when you click Rage, Rage is engaged the entire battle. You cannot change it until you switch out Pokemon, I think. Um, that's the only way you can change it. But if you're doing a solo playthrough like we're doing right now, you you basically are stuck with Rage the rest of the battle. Um, where that changed in Generation 2 is you can select another... So I can keep selecting Rage in the, in the attack builds. Um, as I get attacked and as I attack, it, it builds as well. But if, if, if you switch out and do another move, like say you're seeing Rage doesn't do that much, you want to switch to another, another move, you can... And you're allowed to do that in Generation 2. In Generation 1, you couldn't do that. So they changed the dynamic of Rage, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's not the greatest move, but that dynamic definitely helps you out a lot when it comes to using it. So now we're facing the, the final person in here, and he will give us TM uh, HM5, which is Flash. We don't really need it for a lot of the game, but you actually need it to get to Mount Silver, unless you know how to do it blindly. And you're going to need it for a couple other places in the game, but more or less, uh, I didn't want to backtrack, so that's why in all my playthroughs we're going to end up fighting this. Except possibly there's one example where I won't, and that's with a Pokemon that is very weak to grass. We're kind of weak to grass, but we're just overpowered. So, yeah. 
Now, Croc, uh, Totodile uh, is the latest evolution I've ever seen, where we evolve into our second Pokemon, latest level. So usually you evolve it like you your second stage by like 14, 15, 16, something like that. This is level 18. We don't evolve into level 18 into Croconaw. And Croconaw would be our second stage. So this is prolonged, so we're not going to be evolved before we get to or beat Faulkner. Now Faulkner is like the worst gym leader ever. He has a level 7 Pidgey. Okay. And he also has a level 9 Pidgeotto. How he got a level 9 Pidgeotto, I have no clue. But Rage, like almost one shot there because it had been building up on the first Pokemon. So we beat Faulkner pretty handily. We evolved at level 16. And then we're going to move on. Now we go into Union Cave. You're going to see a little bit of Union Cave here. Union Cave isn't the biggest deal in the world. We don't really have a lot of things in there that are actually we're very useful in there. There's a lot of hikers. So we have Water Gun at this point. But the biggest thing about Union Cave is that we're going to fight this guy right here. And I don't know why we just went for Water Gun against the Water Pokemon. But Rage will build, and we'll get the knockout here pretty easy. And once we get the knockout, and we uh, we level up, and we're gonna beat him, and we evolve into Crocodile. Okay, it's a it's a, another little 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 crocodile thing, and it looks like it's actually got some overalls on, or like his old school like caveman like over the one shoulder kind of caveman outfits. <laughs> but uh, right now we're doing a little bit of the rocket plot line. If you don't know this about me. I do not like the rocket plot line in this game. I think it's really boring. Just my opinion. But uh, this is one I wanted to show because this playthrough is actually pretty fast. And it wasn't a lot of content to show. And I really am not showing that. I'm not going to show the uh, rocket content later in the game. Um, because I'd rather just show the, the, the landmark fights and things like that. There's nothing really important to show out of those. You don't have a Giovanni fight or anything like that. There are some, you know, big wig fights you got to fight for. Uh, in, with Team Rocket, but I, I don't feel like showing those. I'm just going to show you the important battles that matter in this game, because in this game you actually have a post game, which you know, which a lot of people like to see, which is the battle with Red, all the gym leaders in general in uh, Kanto. So that's what we're doing right now is finishing up this rocket, this little itty bitty rocket pot, plot line right here, and we're going to face Bugsy next. At, take note, we're almost at level 20. We're at 17 minutes into the game. Uh, I, my playthrough progression has gotten pretty good. At this point of filming this voiceover, I have played through a handful more playthroughs than just this one. Um, I did have an idea. I'm going to go over with everyone today uh, near the middle of the video. But let's just go. So we're fighting Bugsy. Bugsy, we're going to go for Rage. And the reason why I go for Rage is it's going to build up. Okay. If he attacks back, all it does is add... A lot more oomph to the rage so it's almost the one shot he poison stinged us didn't poison us good and Skyther will be not a one shot but a two shot very easy very quick win over Bugsy and we're gonna learn bite bites actually pretty significant in this playthrough the reason why bite is significant is bite is considered dark type in this generation so in gen 1 it was just no normal type but now that we have bite this battle with our rival will become a lot easier here's why ghastly Weak to dark moves. Bite is considered dark type. Get the one hit knockout very good. Bayleaf is, I uh, made him flinch, but <laughs> we don't have anything great against Bayleaf. So we're going to go for uh, Mud Slap. And we're going to go for Mud Slap because Mud Slap uh, lowers accuracy. Eventually, Bite did get the knockout because Bite also makes you flinch. We get the knockout on the Zubat. We beat our rival very good. And there's not much else to talk about here. However, we're going to go ahead and show that we do get one move in the forest because it's a very useful move. So we have Bite, which is 60 base power, which makes Pokemon flinch. This right here is Headbutt. It is a 70 base power move that makes Pokemon flinch. And with our physical attack stat, this move makes all the sense in the world to add. It's a great move to have. So we're going to go ahead and add it to Reptar's repertoire. We're going to get rid of Scratch. It'll replace Scratch, and we will progress from here. Now what I'm showing you right now is that we get our last HM user, which is Kenya, which is a Spearow with a letter to be delivered. And we're showing you, we talked to this girl, and she's a gossiper, and we can't really progress past that tree until then. And right here I'm showing you that we do know how to get return now. Um, you gotta get your friendship up a certain level, and you have to be a certain day to do it. And we're gonna progress right into Whitney's battle. Whitney's battle doesn't is not very hard because we have Dig. So Whitney consistently uses a move called Rollout. Rollout will put, like doubles its output of damage every turn. 
and dig um, kind of throws that off because it can't build on it. It has to be consecutive hits. So by us using, oh, now she used the headbutt. By us using dig, it throws off that calculation of damage, and we get the win pretty easy against Whitney. She hasn't been pretty hard for a lot of trainers yet. Um, I didn't do this yet, but Crokinole's uh, stats were 65 HP, 80 attack, 80 defense, 59 special attack, 63 special defense, and speed is 58. So showing a little bit more of the plot here. Like I said, we have a bike, a guy who sells bikes. He, he gives you a free one for advertising, and then later he calls you and tells you you can keep it. And then here's where we get the squirt gun. We talked to this girl that we talked to a little bit earlier, and then we talked to her friend, and she gives us a squirt bottle. And we go squirt, squirt, squirt the uh, pseudo wudu. I mean, I know pseudo wudu looks like a tree. I mean, I think he looks like a tree. Let me know what you think. But he's actually rock type. Weirdest thing ever. Not a big deal. But we're gonna go and fight pseudo wudu, knock him out, and we're gonna progress on to the kimono girls. So I didn't go over some things with this Pokemon yet, and there's a good reason for that. So usually I will go over a little bit more of the move set with this Pokemon, and the reason why I've not gone over the move set with this Pokemon because there's no point. The last level up move that we keep is Bite. There is Scary Face, Slash, Screech, and Hydro Pump. We do not keep any of those moves. Slash is the same as, pretty much the same as Headbutt. But by the time we get Slash, we're gonna have we have access to like Earthquake and things like that. So that's way more powerful. Um, Screech uh, lowers the opposite's defense. We don't really need that later in the game. Maybe early it'd be great, but later, no. Early on we have Leer, so Screech and Leer are the same thing to me. And then Hydro Pump. Um, is a, is a powerful move, but it's 80% accurate, so I'd rather just use Surf. And then right now, we're fighting the Kimono Girls, it's going to give us Surf. So we don't really need to do that. And then there are a bunch of TMs that we're using. You'll see those throughout the game. We actually have a couple uh, right now. And so if you look at our move set, let me just, it's going to flash through. Let me just see it real fast. So we should have Ice Beam, Headbutt, and Dig, or, or three uh, TM moves right now that we have. So headbutt can make the opposition flinch. Ice beam is is a 75 base power ice ice move. Um, when we beat Price's gym, they'll get a 10% boost in that, and we can also pick up the Never Melt Ice. So that's what's nice about this Pokemon is you get access to ice. Ice is very useful. One thing with this Pokemon is we did not have to use a hidden power. So hidden power has been a, is a move that was created in Generation 2, and basically based on your stat total and how it adds up, and I don't know the formula but it can give you a typing. So whenever I, I do this game, I do a thing called PK Hex, and PK Hex lets me modify the stats. So usually I, check to go, I like to go with the most perfect version of the Pokemon. However, um, it's not always optimal, because, like for example, if we when we play through as Cyndaquil, uh, fire type is not good against some things, so we need to mitigate that. And the way to do that is through hidden power, and you can make it ice, you can make it electric, you can make it dark, you can make it whatever you want. So the stats are as good as they can be, plus having a uh, type advantage with hidden power. Okay, so we just beat our rival. Sorry, I talked right over it, and the rival wasn't very tough. This Pokemon actually is built very well to handle our rival without too much resistance. But what I'm showing you right now is I usually don't like to show these extra battles because there's so much to go through in Generation Two. But we get to level 30 and we evolve into for Alligator. For Alligator is the final stage evolution of this Pokemon, and now we're fighting Morty. Morty's not going to be tough. We actually have two great moves against Morty. So Morty should be a, a walk in the park, cakewalk, whatever. With Bite is a one-hit knockout on the first Ghastly. It should also be a one-shot on the Haunter. Gengar is the question mark in my mind. I don't think it's going to be a one-shot, no. But we make it flinch, and now we knock it out. And we just have one more Haunter, and we get a clean sweep of, of Morty, and we get our fourth badge by beating Morty. Um, the stats for, for Alligator, I've not gone over that yet. Real quick, 85 HP, 105 attack, 100 defense, special attack is 79, special defense is 83, and speed is 78. So that's our final stats. That's very solid across the board. Now right now you're seeing this sped up at... at uh, I'm already at four times speed, but I doubled that speed just to show this. It's not very important, but I'm just showing you again the plot line. So once you beat Morty, you go to the next town, which I don't know the name off the top of my head, and you fa you you gotta get to the lighthouse. You gotta get to the all the way to the top and talk to J uh, Jasmine. Jasmine is a gym leader, the steel gym leader, but she's trying to care for a sick Pokemon, and you're just you get there, and then she has to go get some medicine for him, and that's what we're doing. And then we progress to the next part. So the way we get that is we got to take a uh, little 
a little brisk swim to an island and Chuck is there. Now Chuck is a gym leader that is starting to become problematic. He was problematic, I think, with the previous Pokemon I had, Cyndaquil, and now he's problematic with this one. So Dig doesn't do much. Um, the first Pokemon was a clean knockout first hit. And we're going to go for Dig again. And we're confused now, so I think we're going to get a reset here. Uh, like I said, Polygraph's pretty tough. We get pretty close to knocking him out, but we... Oh, we do get the knockout. Okay, so I've, I think I skipped... I showed only the one we won. So, we get the win. We get the badge from Chuck. And we talk to his wife and get Fly. And now we're going to go face Gyarados. And this is the red Gyarados. First ever shiny Pokemon in Pokemon. So, the plot line of this game is the Rockets... Uh, Team Rocket has taken... A Pokemon Tower and put out a frequency it's making Magikarp evolve at a, at a drastic rate which is resulting in this one being red um, and a couple other ones are like that as well so once we're done with that we talk to Lance as Squidgy calls him the liar with the flyers because he's supposed to be dragon type but he has two Pokemon that aren't dragon but all of his Pokemon are pretty much flying type and once we talk to him we're gonna skip over the rocket plot line and we're gonna go ahead and face um, Jasmine. Jasmine will come out with uh, three steel Pokemon Magnemite. We do have Dig now, so this should be a pretty easy one-hit knockout. Very good. The next one, Magnemite again. We're going to go for Dig again. He goes, tries to paralyze us. We don't get paralyzed, which is good. And now Steelers comes out and Dig. I don't think it would be a one-shot, but it will be a couple, couple turns. And really, Iron Tail can't do much to us anyway, so we're doing pretty good. Surf is actually a much better move to use. It does more than half. And we get the knockout. Very good. We haven't really had a lot of resistance with gym leaders other than maybe Chuck. So now we've beat Jasmine. They're going to progress on to probably going to face Price after this. So Price is the ice gym leader. We are resisted to a lot of his stuff because we are, we are water type. So Price isn't going to be too big of a headache. But we're going to go and face Price. And we'll see how this battle goes. See what tactics we use. So come out with Seal, the laziest name of a Pokemon ever. Surf is a two-shot. Ice to Wind does new squat to us about, what, eight damage. Dugong comes out. We're going to go for Dig and see how much more Dig does. Dig does not. It's going to be a three-shot, but we can just switch to, well, we shouldn't. I thought we were going to switch to Bite there. And so Dugong heals. Dugong has a move called Rest. It does it all the time, and we get the knockout. And the last Pokemon, Piloswan. Surf is a one shot on Pile of Swan. So Price is usually a pretty pretty easy walk in the park. So we get the pretty easy win over him. And after we beat him, we gotta go face another rocket plot line. So that's why the time jumps so much. Actually, during that rocket plot line, we're gonna face our rival. So our rival's gonna come out with a gold bat. We have ice moves, so pretty easy knocking out, polish them off, move on to Magnemite. Magnemite dig will be a one shot because this is a ground type against electric move. Meganium comes out, ice ice punch. Meganium is very bulky, so that he takes takes it takes it doesn't get one shot. And now we're gonna take on uh, Dig for Haunter. Is I think it's the last generation where this is effective, uh, where it's super effective against Haunter. I think in the future generation you have Levitate, so you can't hit him with Dig and you can't hit him with Earthquake. But it is what it is, and we get the win against Sneasel, knock him out, and we're gonna move on to uh, Claire's gym. Now Claire is what I said about one of the landmark fights that has all dragons. She has all dragon Pokemon here. Ice Punch will one-shot the Dragonair. Very good. Dragonair again. Very good. Dragonair one more time. And the last Pokemon is a Kingdra, which we don't have anything super effective against Kingdra, but Kingdra doesn't also have anything super effective against us, so Ice Punch will be a three-shot. Claire will heal, as per tradition. And one more hit, and good. We get the knockout. We beat Claire. We beat all the gym leaders and Johto. But now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and face our final rival battle in uh, the, the Victory Road. It's going to come out with Sneasel. It's the first Pokemon it brings out. We'll go for Earthquake, get the one-hit knockout. Sneasel is very frail. One-hit knockout, very good. Magneton, also one-hit knockout because weak to... Ground moves. Meganium comes out. Ice Punch is not a one shot. Like I said, hangs on a little bit. It's a very tough Pokemon. Get the knockout. Golbat comes out. Ice Punch should be the one shot. Very good. And then Haunter comes out. Earthquake will be a one shot. Very good. Is that all the Pokemon? Nope. Kadabra. Last one. And we get the win with, with our rival. And we're going to move on to the Elite Four and stomp the Elite Four.
And we're in the Elite Four, so like I said, we're at a good pace right now. And we're going to look at the stats of this Pokemon. So we're at level 50. And what we're doing right now is we're holding the Never Melt Ice. So I've mentioned it before. If you haven't seen my prediction video, I recommend you check it out too. So I'll mention it more in there as well. That at least on Monday. But we get items in this generation. And when you're holding an item, it gives you a boost in, your, um, in, in that type. So for example, we have the Never Melt Ice right now. Gives us a 10% boost on all ice moves. And we also get a boost from whatever badge we win. So when you beat the ice gym, you get a boost in ice moves as well. You beat the normal gym, you beat a boost in that, so on and so forth. So what we're going to do right now, though, is hold the Never Melt Ice. A lot of things in the Elite Four are weak to ice. So we're going to rock out Surf. We can't really change that until we get to um, Kanto anyway. So Surf... Uh, very good move, Stab, uh, very powerful. Nothing's really super weak to Surf, but we're going to go ahead and use it anyway. Ice Punch, a very effective move. Ice, uh, 75 base power, 10% boost with the badge, 10% boost with the item. So it becomes a very uh, formidable uh, move to use in the Elite Four. Earthquake is a very powerful move, 100 base power, uh, 10 power points. Uh, Bite is uh, a... a a dark move so there's some Pokemon that are going to be affected by dark moves so that's why we hung on to that and let's go and look at the stats of this Pokemon when the stats flip there you go attack is 146 defense is 136 special attack is 118 special defense is 122 and speed is 119 so like I said attack is definitely our best stat um, special attack which I wish would be higher considering like ice is Ice and Sur Ice Punch and Surfer are two best moves, but it is what it is. So there's our stats and our moves for this Pokemon. Let's go ahead and take on the Elite Four. The Elite Four with this Pokemon should be—I wouldn't say cakewalk, but it should be relatively easy compared to the last two Pokemon we played through it as. So Will comes out. Will Psychic type trainer. Ice Punch with the knockout. Executor comes out. Ice Punch should be also be a knockout on this Pokemon. Very good. Jinx comes out. Anything physical that's powerful will knock out Jinx in one go. Very good. Slowbro comes out. Earthquake is a two shot. Very good. Amnesia doesn't really do much if you can't attack. And then Exatu comes out. Knockout. Very good. Will cakewalk. Cakewalk. So we're gonna beat. We beat Will and we, we progress on to Koga. Now Koga's po Pokemon are poison type. So we're gonna take on Koga. So he starts off with, I think it's Ariados. Ariados, yep. And Ariados, we can use Surf and one shot. It's very frail. Get the knockout and level up. Pretty nice. For uh, Venomoth comes out. Surf will not be a one shot. It's very close though. Get the knockout. And Fortress comes out. Now Fortress is very bulky. You gotta be careful with Fortress. It can decide to just explode. So you gotta be mindful of that. However, get the knockout with three hits. Muck comes out. Surf will be a two, sh maybe a two shot. Yeah, definitely two shot. And the last Pokemon Crobat, we have an Ice Move, Ice Punch. Doesn't one shot, but we get nothing back in return. Other than we get a full full restore, so we got to knock it out again or hit it two more times, get the knockout, and progress on to Bruno. We don't usually talk about Bruno very much, but in G this generation, his team is a little bit better. Not a lot, but a little bit better. So let's go ahead and progress on. There we go. Put a shirt on, pal. All right, so Bruno comes out. Bruno comes out. We're going to go ahead and he's got to hit him on top. We're going to go for Surf. He digs a hole. I forgot about this mechanic. I did it in the last video. I didn't do it in this one. But when you go underground, you can use Earthquake and, and knock him out. He'll still hit him underground. Get the knockout on Hitmon Chan. Now here comes Hitmon Lee. Kicking Pokemon. Hitmonchamp. Or I'm sorry, Machamp. Not Hitmonchamp. Uh, Machamp. Uh, two shot. Very good. And then Onyx comes out. Any Ice or Surf will knock him out one shot. Very good. Beat Bruno. Uh, like I said, it's not very tough in this generation. Now, here's the toughest one, which is Karen. Karen's going to come out with uh, an Umbreon. Umbreon is the biggest pain in the butt to like everyone who plays this game. Because Umbreon comes will use sand attack and sand attacks lower your accuracy and it does it for the rest of the battle so it's not great but we just like i said we just don't have anything great to knock it out in one go 
So we do get the knockout. We have a lot of health left, but here's the problem. Is not right now, but then we get Sunsport, so that's even better. Great. But uh, now we're Sunsport and our action is lowered. So we're going to try to attack things, but if we don't get an attack off, now we're cursed. So this is just, it's just progressed so, so well. And Markrow, if we can get an attack off, Markrow would be a one shot. Oh, Markrow would be a one shot. It's the last one we don't get an attack off on. Uh, Houndoom. So Houndoom, all we do is get one surf off, we'd have won this battle. Yep, and we don't go first, because uh, when you're paralyzed, you don't have priority to go first. You go second all the time. So we're going to face this again. Um, a little bit of unluckiness there. There's a lot of things that played in. The accuracy drop, the curse, the paral paralyzation. All those things just, like, sucked. <laughs> now we're confused, which is even better. So now we're hurting ourselves. Um, but Earthquake, we hit one more time. We'll knock it out. Very good. We're no longer confused. And we're not, uh, we don't have our, I don't think we have our actually lowered that much. So we, we freeze Volplume, which is great, because now we don't have to worry about attacking back. Gengar's up, so Bite will be a two-shot. It does flinch, so it doesn't attack us back, which is great. Getting a lot of those. Markrow comes out. Ice Punch will be a one-shot on Markrow. Very good. And then Houndoom. Houndoom should be a one-shot with Surf. Now we can attack it. See how much easier that battle is if we just don't get Sand Attacked and Paralyzed and Curse happens. So, it is what it is. But, we get the win, and now we got to face one more trainer. And once we face this trainer, we will be the champion of the Elite Four. So, right now I'm saving, and I'm saving. And so, now we got to face Lance, the liar with the flyers. He called that, uh, Squidgy calls him that because he has all flying types. Gyarados, water flying. But, we're going to go for Surf, or Bite. Yeah, there we go, Bite. And he went for Hyper Beam, so he has to recharge. So we get a whole turn to, to attack for free. Get the knockout. And now, the, the only other one is going to be any kind of challenge is Charizard, so to speak. But not really, because we have Surf. So we're going to one-shot the rest of this team. Dragon comes out. Last one shot. Very good. Charizard comes out. Surf. And then the last Pokemon is Aerodactyl, which again... Not a dragon, but, you know, he uses them. It's another flying rock type. So we get a pretty much a clean sweep of Lance. And so I'm tapping, 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 trying to get the the Elite Four time. And we're going to just have a Professor Elman Oak is there. And my mom. And click, 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 click. This part takes so long. I wish him just time. And I think, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it now because I've had a way of doing it. And for Alligator, very good. And we're going to pause. So he beat the game in 1 hour, 38 minutes, and 36 seconds. So pretty solid. Uh, pretty solid, honestly. We're way ahead of everyone else we've played through as. I could probably get this time down. Uh, as I keep getting better at playing it, I keep getting better and better times and more efficiency. So we'll let that play out a little bit. And, yeah, that's it. So, that's, so we beat the Elite Four, and the game's not over. It's only about half time. So we're going to go ahead and face off against all the, the gym leaders in Kanto. And now that we've run a few errands, we're going to go ahead and take on the Kantonian gym leaders. They're very much a walk in the park. And so we get on the SS Aqua, and we get off the SS Aqua, and we're going to go ahead and progress into Lieutenant Surge's gym. He should be the hardest one, honestly. Him and the next one um, we have, not the next one, the one after the next one we have. It should be the hardest ones because we are weak to it. However, we have earthquakes so anything here that is electric type we're getting the pretty easy knockout knockout on electro buzz very good earthquake very powerful move very good against electro type or electro pokemon and we get one more knockout electrode he has two electrodes i did not know that until right now so we beat lieutenant surge pretty handily we're going to beat him and we're going to progress on to i believe we're facing sabrina next don't blink you'll miss a lot of these battles Okay, I'm going to go right through the gym leaders. They are like a hot knife through butter. Okay, uh, psychic type Pokemon for the most part are pretty frail. Um, we have upgraded our move a little bit. We have return now. Uh, return is a, uh, I, think it's, I think it maxed out 102, but with a physical attack, uh, it's very powerful. And you can actually have the pink bow and make it a little bit more powerful. Plus, it's 10% boosted by beating Whitney's gym. So Sabrina's a cakewalk. We knock her out in four straight hits. And this is the one I thought also would be pretty tough because it's grass type. However, as you'll see, not that tough. Ice uh, ice beam now, not ice punch. Is ice beam is a 90 base power move, 
100% accurate, so it was much more powerful. And with uh, Mystic Water and uh, us beating Price's Gem, Ice is very powerful. Ice, any Ice Beam is very powerful, but Ice Beam is more powerful than Ice Punch was. Um, so we bought that right after we beat the Elite Four. It's available to you. There's a guy who shows up on a certain day. I think it's Wednesday, and he can let you buy it. So now we're facing Misty. Misty is the same type as us, so you'd think there wouldn't be any huge advantage here, but I'm going to go for Return. One hit knockout, very good. Quagshire, Earthquake, should be a two shot, very good. And the rest of our Pokemon should be pretty easy with Return. Return will be a two shot on the Lapras, very good. And Starmie, should be a, uh, Earthquake should be a one, uh, no, it's a two, two shot. And we got Confused. Not fun. Being confused is not fun. But we defeat Misty. She's pretty much cakewalk. And we're going to go ahead and progress on to, I believe it's Brock. Actually, nope, it's Janine. So Janine comes out, and she's all psychic. She's all poison. She's the definition of nepotism. She only got this because her, her dad left and went to the Elite Four. Um, I guess maybe her daughter... Uh, I, I have this joke in Generation 1 where I think... Uh, um, What's his name? Koga is actually forming a circus because he has a lot of jugglers and line tamers and stuff in there. So I always made a joke he's making a circus and he's the ringleader. So maybe she was part of his circus. And I, I don't know. I don't know. But we beat her pretty handily. She's pretty easy. And we're going to progress on from there. Now part of the plot line in this part of the game is the towers. Uh, you, someone stole some uh, mechanical equipment from uh the power plant so it's not running therefore the tower is not running so you have to do, you have to get a part bring it back and then you can use um what's it called the uh shoot what's it called pokey flute there we go so we're facing brock right now we are pretty much all the way through brock without any resistance at all his all his pokemon are all rock type some are rock water so it's a little bit more difficult because you can't just use a rock, a water move because they're kind of like neutral but we beat brock pretty handily and with that done, we have all but two of our gym leaders left in this region. And that is Blaine, the fire type gym leader, which if you didn't know this, water is very effective against fire type. So we're going to one shot his entire team. So there's two knockouts and Rabbit Ash, three knockouts. And very good. We get the win. We beat Blaine. Blaine gives us the badge. And now we're going to go ahead and progress on to Blue. Blue is supposed to be a ground type trainer, but he acts, acts as a, a a very balanced, good mixed uh, team. But against us, it's not that great. Ice Beam's a one shot on the Pidgeotto or Pidgeot, and we're going to not Executor. Guess what? Ice Beam's a one shot on the Executor as well. Very good. Alakazam comes out, and we're going to use Return, a good physical move. Any good physical move will take out Alakazam as long as you have good physical t uh, stats. Return. Should be a two shot on the Gyarados. Hyper Beam doesn't do squat. Our defense is very good with this Pokemon. Rhydon comes out. It's a one shot on the Rhydon. You'd think Rhydon would be a little better against water considering he can use Surf, which I don't get why Rhydon can use Surf and other Pokemon can't, but he can. So we beat Blue. We beat our, uh, our not even our rival, I guess. We beat him pretty bad. Now we're moving on to. Um, red. Red is the final boss battle in the game. And we're going to come out. Pikachu is going to be a cakewalk. We used all of our rare candies at this point. So we're all the way up to level 75. Ice Beam is going to be a two shot. Takes in Sunlight. Take Ice Beam again. Very good. So we're at full health going into his third Pokemon. Umbreon, or Espeon, I'm sorry. Um, is pretty pretty hard to, uh, doesn't really do too much. But we get the knockout on the Espeon. Now, Snorlax is going to be tricky. The Snorlax, I think, is going to paralyze us, or try to at least. And right now, our water moves are kind of nerfed. So right now, we're paralyzed. Yep, that's exactly what I thought would happen. Because, uh, what's her, what's his name? Uh, Venusaur did Sunny Day. So our water moves are nerfed. Okay? We're paralyzed. And this thing's going to kick my, like, beat my ass while I'm uh, sleeping. <laughs> so Body Slam gets the knockout. So Snorlax is a toughie. So we got to make sure. So we go ahead, and we get into our bag. And we're going to make sure that we can get a little bit more of a boosted version of uh, Surf. So we have the Never Melt Ice, which is only useful against one Pokemon. That's Venusaur. So we can still use... Uh, it's an Ice Beam's a two-shot anyway, so maybe it's not that much worth it. But Earthquake's a one-shot still in the Pikachu. That's not going to change. Pikachu's very frail. I don't know why people think he's like a great Pokemon. He's not. So Ice Beam's still going to be a two-shot. 
But now we have a much more super affected, effective uh, uh, surf now because we added Mystic, Mystic Water. Mystic Water adds 10% to all your water damaging mo water moves. So when you do have damage, you get another 10% boost from Mystic Water. So return, we're gonna go for Ice Beam. We knock, we, well we freeze it so we don't have to worry about a lot of things and we get the knockout very good. So now he's got two Pokemon he's gonna bring out. He's gonna bring out Blastoise, which is Blastoise is gonna be pretty neutral. But as long as we can just outpace it, it's Surf is doing a decent amount, I guess. Not too much, but a decent amount. It's the knockout on the Blastoise. And that leaves just one Pokemon, which we have Surf. Surf will obliterate that Pokemon. And we beat Red at a time of 2 hours, 55 minutes, and uh, basically 60, 58 seconds. Okay, we beat him pretty handily. He gives three dots and right there. So that is our playthrough. That is the playthrough of Totodile. Crocodile for alligator in in crystal. Um, like I said in the beginning, a lot of people think this is the best starter. I can understand why. I think a little more optimization on a couple on the other starters maybe make them a little bit better. But like I said, this is the third the third Pokemon. So like oh, I think on like every generation I'm aware of, the grass type is first, fire type is second, and then water type is third. So he does have the advantage of me knowing the game a little bit better. So, but this is uh, this is a solid playthrough. Two hours, five minutes, and 58 seconds. So two hours and six minutes. Let's put it what it is. And like I said, there's a lot of ways we could have mitigated a lot of things. We could save some time, and that's this part of the progression of playing the game. So if you didn't know already, there was a prediction video that came out on Monday. Uh, let me know what you think about that. How close was I? Let me know what you think. Do you think this is the best starter? Do you think another one was better? If I just gave another chance. Whatever you uh, whatever you decide to do with that, let me know. Uh, and the next Pokemon I have to play through is Sentret. Now, I just want to ask this. So I had an idea. I was going through Sentret and I saw a thing called Egg Moves. And uh, I wanted to ask everyone what they thought about me doing a playthrough with Egg Moves and without an Egg Move. So if you don't know what an Egg Move is, like I said, in this generation you have Breeding. So in future generations, there's also Pokemon and they have moves elaborated on. So for example, in generation one, this Pokemon could probably learn Body Slam. Okay, in generation one, Body Slam is a TM you could have added. In this generation, there's no TM for Body Slam. So what that means for us is Body Slam is not accessible unless we, we learn to be a level up. But in future generations, that move may be available and for Alligator in that generation can use it. So it can, be, it can be technically be backported into this generation. It also is a move your uh, whoever, whenever the breeding process happens, if, if he has that move, um, it, it will start off on the Pokemon um, as a as a starting move. So um, I'm not gonna. I may do it with the starters later. I'm not gonna go back and redo the starters with an egg move. However, going forward, I want to get one's thoughts on me doing uh, on playthroughs. What I have a Pokemon has a starter at least in Generation Two is egg move on Wednesday or non egg move on Wednesday and egg move Friday so that you can see the kind of the difference in the two let me know what you think it's just an idea I want to throw around but I want to ask you um, like I said before please like share, subscribe this channel um, getting some pretty good traction but I want to get to 500 subscribers by the end of April and your your help is going to be immensely uh, immensely important to that success so let me know what you think have a good one I'll see you guys next time on Monday Monday we have a centric prediction video so let me know what you think have a good one and see you